Welcome into the Yachts and Audibles podcast. I'm Matt Prey, Mariscope with Jared Macker on the show as always. And today on signing day, we're bringing on head coach, the Oregon football program, Dan Lanning. Uh, you're busy. We thank you for your opportunity to get you for a couple minutes of time. Um, let's get on right into this, Dan. Just a simple question. What makes this class successful for you guys? What do you like about this group for you? Well, I think we had great talent, but I'm, I'm probably just as excited about the character of the guys that we're bringing in this program. You know, a lot of these guys dreamed of being Oregon Ducks, and, and now they're getting to see that dream come to life. Um, you know, we have a lot of, you know, great players that are coming in. We added, you know, some dynamic talent on the offense side of the ball, guys that we think can um, really change and, and uh, flip the field, you know, and, and then really one on the trenches also on that side of the ball. Got some, um, you know, big pieces up front that I think are going to be, you know, dynamic for us in the future. Um, defensively, same thing, really started in the trenches. And then we were able to add some speed. You know, got a couple guys that, um, you know, have track times, verified track times that we know that that'll show up. It certainly shows up in the secondary and some instinctive linebackers as well. So really overall, really a great group um, that I'm excited to get here and start developing. Kind of a personal level, Dan, for you and your staff, you spend so much time recruiting these guys. What's it like when you get here and there's some finality, you hit, you hit the finish line? What's it, what's it feel like crossing that? Well, I think I'm going to go to bed tonight, Eric. That's <laughs> something I'm kind of excited about. You know, you don't uh, – there's there's not a lot of re relaxing when it comes to recruiting, especially down, you know, to the 11th hour um, for signing day. So our staff has worked extremely hard. Um, it's nice seeing, you know, hard work you know, uh, pay off and, you know, the relationships and consistency really pay off down the stretch. I think that, you know, made a big impact for us today. Um, and, you know, this is a great class. You know, these are guys that see the vision of what we're building here and the direction that we're headed and um, just the moves the university have made to put us, you know, in at the front, you know, of everyone's uh, thought process in college football. So it's an exciting day for us, for sure. Dan, just thanks again for coming on the pod. We know how, how busy you are. You kind of just outlined it there the last couple hours, but or last couple of days. Uh, but now that we can talk about some of these things, just how did the upcoming move to the Big Ten kind of influence the class or, or did it at all? Yeah, I think it, it certainly made an impact. This was a place that a lot of people wanted to be a part of. But, you know, at one point there were some questions about, OK, where exactly does Oregon fall in this, um, you know, in the, in the ever changing world of college football? And once we were able to provide some clarity there, I think it it really established like, yes, this is a place that I want to be a part of. And it's clearly uh, they're joining a dominant conference in college football, um, which is something else that these guys want to be a part of. And then just the fact that we're going to be operating in every time zone in the United States, which, you know, the reality is we recruit in every time zone in the United States. You know, we had we were up here at 4 a.m. this morning getting signing papers from the East Coast and then be able to go. Uh, coast to coast to get great players, you know, I think that that was appealing when you talk about that move to the Big Ten and every other piece that falls within that. Got a back-to-back -back question for you here. With the college football, it's probably the sport, uh, the, one of the major sports that has changed the most over the last couple of years, like last five years. How do you feel like you, your staff, your recruiting staff, everybody else has been able to keep up with it and then turn in another, you know, top 10 class? We're looking at a top top five class at this point right now. Yeah, I think that's the game, right? It's it's about adapting. You know, when I when I picked Oregon, um, you know, and was fortunate enough that Oregon picked me, I always thought about how Oregon's, you know, you, you think of Oregon, you think of innovation, you think of cutting edge. And right now it's important to be on the cutting edge in college football and be able to adapt and grow uh, and change with time. So, you know, that's something that our staff's done a phenomenal job. You know, I'm, I get to sit here talking with you guys, but uh, this doesn't exist without the great staff and the people that we have, um, you know, outside of this circle that really give and, and make this program so special. Yeah, I was going to just touch right on that, Dan. Just Tyler Dean, JR, Pat, Lydia, countless others that so many people, the average fan base that are paying attention right now to signing day, maybe tuning in for the first time, they don't know who these people are. And, and can you maybe just speak to just the work that these people do, what the importance of these people are, and just like you said, adapting? This, this staff has grown significantly over time. Yeah, if you're a part of our organization, you're involved in recruiting. And, you know, we think about this, you know, very similar, you know, it's a customer service oriented uh, job. And it's really important that those relationships aren't something that just exists in recruiting. They exist, you know, every single day once our players get here as well. But we want to be the Chick-fil-A of football, right? We want to give phenomenal service and recognize people when they get here. And all those people that you mentioned, uh, as well as a ton of others, um, they spend 
you know, an insane amount of time making sure that we put our best foot forward and making everyone's experience when they step on campus or hop on a phone call uh, elite. And that's a big, big part of what we do. You know, you know, looking at the class and the way it's ranked by folks in our industry, it's it's headlined by a couple of defensive linemen or players that are in the front seven. I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to just talk about Aiden Breland, Elijah Rushing. You could talk about some of the other guys too, but just those two in particular and what they bring and, and how exciting you are to, to land the two best defensive linemen on the West Coast. Well, I think that's the key. You know, I remember um, being part of a national championship team there at Georgia and then looking back at that team and recognizing how many – um, pieces of that team were coming from the West Coast. And, you know, when we got here, we decided that, you know, West Coast talent's really important, you know, whether it be in California or just on this side of the nation, you know, they don't have to travel that far to go be a part of something really special. And I think they recognize it. Obviously, both those guys are extremely talented as well as some of these other guys that um, we brought in. Um, they fit what we're trying to do. They're, they're guys that are anxious to learn and get better. You know, I always say you don't eat an elephant in one bite. It takes time. And uh, we get, we get, to get our hands on these guys early because they get to get here early with, with being mid years. Um, you know, a couple of those guys are going to be able to come in and, and learn fast and make an impact. And bringing in talented linebackers this year, brought in some last year as well. Just you as a former linebackers coach and your defensive staff, just what are some of the traits that you're looking at in the linebackers and going out and recruiting them and bringing in guys like Braden Platt and Dylan Williams? Yeah, speed, um, you know, athleticism is really important. I think you're your best when you're able to get those guys involved in things outside of just defense. You talk about guys that bring special teams value. That's one of the, the number one ways that you can impact this team. Um, and we've, you know, been fortunate to have some really good linebacker play this year and excited to see what those guys do. You know, Dylan, um, Braden, Kamar, those guys, you know, coming to be a part of what we're doing, I think makes you dynamic there at the second level. And those have to be your signal callers too. Some smart guys that can adapt and adjust. And, and that's where we've had success when we have good players at those positions. How has your connection back to Missouri helped on the recruiting show? I'm just looking at this cycle from a prep perspective. We've got a couple of guys there with McClellan and Gray. There's a transfer portal edition. I don't know if we can talk about that's also from that state, but just in general, I mean, talk about kind of your connections back home. Yeah, I think every coach leans in on on uh, places that he's familiar with. You know, I think there's some great talent in that state. Um, certainly a place that's near and dear to my heart. And we're looking to get the best. Again, we want to go anywhere and everywhere in the nation that um, there's great talent. And you talk about the players that we've been able to get from Missouri this year. Um, I hope next year we can go find the next guy that fits, you know, the mold for what we're looking for. Um, but we'll always do that. We're not going to sacrifice talent or character when it comes to that. And those relationships help. You know, they certainly help. And it's, it's one of the reasons we're able to get guys like that on our team. You mentioned you're going to probably sleep tonight. Um, that's important. Uh, what's next, though, on on the to-do list from a recruiting perspective after today? Like you, you mentioned multiple times that you always have to be recruiting. Like What's next for a program after today? Well, I still think one of the biggest pieces is probably overlooked on this day is, you know, college football also right now is about retention. It's about keeping the great players that you have on your team in your program. And, uh, you know, we have some unfinished business here. We still have another game that we want to go play um, with a phenomenal bowl game, you know, in the Fiesta Bowl. It's going to be a great experience for our guys. But just getting an opportunity to pour into those guys a little bit more, you know, our players sacrifice a little bit during recruiting season because we're pouring a lot of attention into other people. And uh, this gives you an opportunity to go back and pour back into your players players that are on your team. Um, we'll still keep our eyes open for what's out there and available to enhance what we have going on right now um, within the program. But, you know, our focus right now is certainly the the next game that we get to go step out on the field for. What was it like being a part of the Heisman Trophy stuff with Bo? I'm just curious because I'm sure that's something that, you know, you as a head coach probably dream of having players up for those kind of awards. Was it surreal for you being in New York City at that ceremony like that? And just talk us through that experience. Yeah, it's uh, certainly surreal. You look around that room and you're in the room and in and, and presence of some legends, you know, some legends in college football. And, you know, the excitement around seeing somebody get to live out their dream, you know, Bo, that's something that he wanted to be a part of. And we're going to have a lot of players that come to this program that get to be a part of, you know, fantastic awards. And I think that always comes through, you know, team success. You look at the guys that are part of that ceremony, they're, win they're on winning teams, right? They're on teams that had a lot of success. And, um, Bo deserves every bit of attention coming his direction um, because of what he was able to do for the Ducks. But I know we're going to have a lot of players that sit in a similar seat, you know, in the future. You guys just announced the signing of Ryan Pelham. I'm, I'm curious, just what do you like about him? There's a lot of excitement around it. What, what did you just like about, I guess, Pelham and McClellan, two guys you flipped today? Yeah, turn on the film. 
I mean, these guys are dynamic with the ball in their hands. They're the kind of guys that can catch it, you know, one yard from the line of scrimmage and turn it into an 80 yard play. Um, they're explosive. They've, you know, again, have a unique skill set. We're, we're looking for guys that can, you know, people have to think about on defense. How do we stop that guy? Um, when you do that, that sets up everything else in your offense, you know, within the run game, uh, passing game. And we've got some guys on our team right now that can distribute the ball to those those guys. So I think wideouts are always anxious to know who's going to be throwing it their direction. And, and we have, um, you know, some great pieces for that in the future as well. Dan, last year on signing day, had some fireworks, capped off the night with a cigar. <laughs> Another one coming tonight, or what do we got? <laughs> like like I said earlier, I, I don't know if I'll have a cigar tonight. I'm probably just more anxious to lay down in bed at some point uh, when this day wraps up. We've got some prep still um, for the bowl game that we're doing today. Um, got to hit some two minutes, some two-point plays. So we got some other things to clean up. We'll have meetings tonight with our players. Um, so who knows when I get back to the house if I've got the uh, juice, maybe. Um, but maybe, maybe not. I might just lay down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, thanks for coming on the show. We, we really appreciate your time, and we know you got lots to, to do still. So uh, good luck the rest of the way, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks, guys.